what happens when you don't, what bacteria will do in your mouth, to your mouth? Well, what it will do to your mouth is maybe not as consequential as what happens throughout the entire body system. So much we can do in the mouth to control and improve and repair. But the connections now with bacteria in the mouth into the bloodstream, we get gum disease, we have a chronic infection. Bacteria progress right into the bloodstream, so we're going to increase the chances of diabetes. We're going to affect the pancreas. We're going to increase the chances of heart disease because we're going to create a chronic inflammation and infection in the arteries, as well as the heart valves, the heart muscles itself. We're going to increase the chances of stroke because of the inflammation in those blood vessels. All these things have been proven, the connection with pneumonia. Then we haven't touched on the potential, as you mentioned a bit earlier, inflammation in the joints. Mm -hmm. What's causing inflammation in the joints? Well, I've had patients that have had to be on an antibiotic for dental-related problems, and they come back and they say, my knee doesn't hurt anymore. What does that tell you? Mm. Mm -hmm. A connection with that joint, with uh, infection, bacterial infection. And we haven't even talked about viruses. So we're finally coming on to the, the thinking that the body is an integrated whole. <laughs> mm. in, the, in the first section, at the beginning, in the first segment of, the, of this discussion, uh, two hours, three hours ago, anyway, uh, someone mentioned the, the rise of acid in the body uh, through several means. What I've read uh, is that to combat that, uh, we raise the pH level into our body, which will then fight the acid. And um, an interesting way to do that is take a little um, bicarbonate of soda. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. um, and put a little water in it. And you drink that, and your pH level is going to rise. A little bit like in the pools. But that's but a very temporary method. Temporary. The body usually tries to balance the pH on a longer-term basis by pulling the calcium and minerals out of the bones, out of the teeth. Correct, yeah. Oh. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it does, yeah. So if we help the body by taking some of that baking soda... Or by not eating things that... Or cause acidity. Well, but by yeah. the same token, you take the baking soda in and you're, you're modifying the ability of your stomach to digest properly. Oh, that's the other side of it. And then the other thing to consider is what is the acid imbalance doing with the kidneys? Lungs and kidneys are critical in maintaining that acid-base balance. Mm. And so then we talk about kidney stones. Why? Why? Yeah. Why do we have kidney stones? Well, is it coming from bacterial, viral? Is it coming from acid-base imbalance and the minerals that are being pulled out? So there's a, a lot of interconnection. Wow, look at that. So stay off sodas. <laughs> so what, yeah, stay off what sodas. are the foods that are acid-producing in the body? Very good point. All meats, all grains. What are the foods that are alkaline-producing in the body? fruits and vegetables so the best thing to do I start my day off every day now with greens that I juice exactly uh -huh. a mixture of greens and celery and I put it in the little magic bullet or whatever it's mm -hmm. called Nutribullet and it turns it into a juice and that's what I start my day off mm -hmm. with in order to maintain a good alkalinity and alkaline mm -hmm. system that Dr. Scott and I were visiting at break a study was done just a couple of years ago a cardiologist had a heart attack. And he's like, how can I have a heart attack? And so they did an arteriogram, and they found that his arteries were, especially his cardiac arteries, were twisted, narrowed, and not flowing smoothly. And so he went on this particular diet, as Dr. Scott's describing, lots of greens, and especially juicing the greens. They did it for a year. They ran another arteriogram, and his arteries were straight, they were widened and they were equidistant and they weren't twisted anymore. Mm. Only thing he changed was his diet. He was taking no pharmaceuticals with this at all. No statin drugs, no cholesterol drugs, no blood pressure drugs. So what happens when you do this type of diet? It's been shown if we ingest, if we eat green leafy vegetables, 
Within 20 minutes, those vegetables have caused bacteria to take the nutrients and convert it into nitric oxide and our blood vessels dilate. It's been proven. Mm. If we dilate blood vessels, we're less likely to have a heart attack and stroke. If, however, we have something, fast food nature, beef, those kinds of things as Dr. Scott's describing, our vessels narrow and we've just increased our opportunity for a heart attack and stroke. If you enjoyed this clip, please feel free to check out the full version in the link located in the description panel below. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, help yourself to the diverse array of teachings located on this YouTube channel or on our website at glc.us.com.